After decades of research and development, medical scientists have announced that nano robots capable of isolating and eliminating cancer cells could soon be ready for human testing. But it's the way it works that's truly mind blowing. Now, check this out. Researchers at the Weiss Institute at Harvard University use a technique called DNA origami, and that's represented here by these ribbons. The robot is essentially made up entirely of these synthetic DNA strands. And when left alone, the strands then self assemble. After all, they've been pre programmed by engineers to assume a specific shape for a specific mission. In this case, that shape is a simple cylinder with two open ends on each end held together by a DNA lock. Now, the lock can only be opened through a corresponding molecule or protein, much like a standard lock and key. And as you can see here, once this happens, the robot flings open to reveal its payload. Uh, and in this case, again, it might be a cancer drug that's then administered to the patient. Dr. Ido Bashlet, a leading researcher in the field of nanorobotics, explains how this works. A nanorobot is capable of recognizing a small population of target cells within a large population of bystander cells which should be left alone. Uh, and the way it does that is that while all cells share the same drug target that we want to attack, only those target cells express the proper set of keys that open the nanorobot and therefore only they will be attacked by the nanorobot and, and by the drug. So let's recap a little bit and take a closer look at this nano robot. Now, remember that this structure is made entirely of synthetic DNA, but it's fully biocompatible with the way the human body works, meaning that not only can the robot be programmed to do a job, it can break down and be expelled naturally when that job is over. But what this monumental step in medical science represents goes much farther than treatment and rehabilitation to include diagnostics as well. According to Dr. Bachelet, nanorobots can already identify at least 12 different types of tumors. And in the near future, these bots might be more like microsurgeons injected into our arms as part of routine checkups, scanning our bodies and attacking disease cells before disease is even discovered. Needless to say, the future applications of this technology are endless. Manuel Rapalo, RT Studios, Washington. Hello, folks. This is my third attempt for this video. For some reason, YouTube was not allowing me to upload it, and my software is not allowing me to edit it. But nanomotors are controlled for the first time ever inside living cells. This video is a demonstration of a very active gold nanorod internalized inside the HELA cell in an acoustic field. This video shows dark particles of the HELA cell that interact with spinning gold nanorods. A team of chemists and engineers at Penn State University have placed synthetic motors inside human living cells. For this experiment, the team uses HELA cells, which is an immortal line of human cervical cancer cells that typically are used in research studies. And the way they are using these cells is through electromagnetic steering together with high frequency. Our body is made of protons and neutrons, which are positives and negatives, and we are indeed electromagnetic vibratory creatures. The frequency comes from not only our environment, but Everything vibrates. Frequencies everywhere around us, from the sun all the way to the darkest and deepest part of our solar system. You cannot escape frequency. Is it possible that some type of signal could be given to these nanomotors to be activated in the human body? It is possible. There's Gwen Towers everywhere, cellular towers everywhere, and satellites to beam any kind of frequency they wish to through various techniques from your TV to your computer to your cell phone so it's no secret all the articles are out there that this is possible to see this in actual real life is uh, amazing because you can see how these nanomotors and nanobots can actually attack not only human cells but attack our human humanity period This team has been working on this for the past 10 years. They have been working on this experiment and study for the sake of good. Because if you actually take and put 
effective medicines in these nanomotors, then you can technically target specific areas and heal. Is DARPA going to use this? YouTube is riddled with fear mongering and videos of nanotechnology gone wrong. It is a possibility. I am not going to sit there and say that this is not a possible thing. Yet, it is very intriguing that you see these cells acting the way they're acting once the nanomotors get attached to them. Now, all these videos are of the HELA cells and they have been magnified up to a thousand percent or a thousand times magnification. And as you see, these nano uh, motors under the proper frequency seem to be building some type of fibers or fibrous materials. And I wonder if there's any connection to the Morgellons victims. It is a possibility. I mean, um, this is scary stuff in a way because it is us playing Franken God. Franken God is a reality when you come to this point. The transhumanist agenda is moving forward as always. Gold nanorods that move along the edge of the membrane of the HELA cell. This video is an interaction between gold nanorods and polystyrene tracer particles. I hope I pronounced that right. These gold nanorods and red blood cells are interacting. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go ahead and post the articles below and you can see for yourself. I gave a talk at the first TED in 1984. It was two hours long and it had five predictions in it that more or less all came true and people called them predictions but they really weren't predictions they were extrapolations the reason i talked for two hours is not because i was fidel castro and i was giving a rally it's because i had 15 years of research stored up I was about to open the media lab and it was real easy to talk about what we were going to do and some of it even seemed old hat even though in retrospect people thought oh this is amazingly predictive 30 years later they say make a prediction as if i had made predictions the first time which i hadn't so this year i actually did make a prediction and it is in the prediction category in the sense that it's not an extrapolation of work I've been doing for 15 years, but it's part of work that some of my colleagues have started at the Media Lab, which is really looking at the brain, not just mapping the brain, but how do you interact with the brain pretty directly. And almost everybody who's done that has done it from the outside, you know, with sticking pins and needles or, you know, EEG or MEG or other ways. And the key to my prediction is the best way to interact with the brain is from the inside, from the bloodstream. Because if you inject tiny robots into the bloodstream, they can get very close to all the cells and nerves and things in your brain really close. So if you want to input information or read information, you do it through the bloodstream. So by extension, and this is you know, why it's a prediction, because it's, it's by extension, you could in theory load Shakespeare into your bloodstream and as the little robots get to the various parts of the brain, they deposit little pieces of Shakespeare or little pieces of French if you want to learn how to speak French. So in theory, you can ingest information. And that was my prediction. I won't be around to see whether it's true, but you know, like many of these predictions, it doesn't have to be true <laughs> as long as it gets people thinking. And there are people thinking about this and looking at it quite seriously. 
and I think it's it's a area in in sort of synthetic biology and and sort of the interface between biology and silicon that is really what the future is about. The digital world today is like plastics were 25 years ago. It's important field, but kind of over. Digital world is like plastics, and the biotech world is the is the next phase.